Well, the earthquake that hit Port-au-Prince, Haiti earlier this year was just the first of several to rumble across the globe in recent months. But is all this activity out of the ordinary? Here to help us answer that question is Todd Hallahan, an OSU geology professor that studies earthquakes around the globe. Well, in doing the research for this interview, Todd, I just looked at the internet and I found the Iranian president blaming the earthquakes on a modest clothing on some Iranian women. I saw another website that said it's the end of times. What does a geologist say? Well, it's interesting because very, very commonly uh, it's explained if there's a large earthquake that there's something new that's happening on the earth and that there's the end of time coming or that there's something that's changed. But geologically, uh, earthquakes are happening every single day. And if you look at something like an eight or a nine, a very large quake, that's on average something that's a once a year event. So it is relatively rare, but it's still every single year on average. If you're looking at something smaller like a seven, those are happening several times a year. So if you said, I think there's gonna be a seven or an eight that happens this year, you're not predicting anything. You're just explaining that the earth is still spinning around and doing its things that it always does. If you're looking at something small like a five or below, those are everyday events. And so if, there's websites that you can track where they're happening um, and you can watch them happen. And we keep track of the larger ones uh, where you might s actually feel it or feel some damage. But if you're keeping track of every quake that happened, there's, there's millions that happen. You'd be populating a website continually with all the little shaking that's happening on the planet. But once people see a big one that causes some fatalities, then the people are a little more attuned to it. And then around the world, they watch them a little more closely. And so suddenly every earthquake becomes news and the world is ending at least until we stop reporting on it. <laughs> well, the 7.0 certainly got everyone's attention in Haiti. Why was that earthquake so bad? So that one was uh, a little different in that um, earthquakes are happening around the globe, but you, you have to get one to line up underneath something to get the most shaking. And Port-au-Prince had, had two strikes against it. One is that the earthquake was very, very close to it. It was very shallow. And so in terms of proximity, the earth was shaking right near the city and right underneath it. And so uh, from that perspective, you get a lot more damage. The other bad problem they have is the building standards in Haiti were quite low. And so economically, they couldn't build seismically uh, stabilized homes. And so they received a lot of damage. You've had earthquakes that are much larger, such as in Chile and in Seattle, that really didn't do that much damage because they built everything built around the idea that they're gonna have the earthquakes. Uh, Port-au-Prince knew they were going to have an earthquake at some point, and it actually was one segment that was prone and was predicted to be uh, moving relatively soon, but they just did not have the economic capability to build their buildings according to those standards. Can we predict earthquakes? We, can, um, we, we can't predict earthquakes, and we've been trying for many years now, and the, every once in a while something comes out that says, oh, we've got a way to predict earthquakes. And what people typically want is they want a prediction that says next Tuesday at 5, this quake is going to happen at this location with this intensity. And that's what people really love to have. It'd be a, it'd be a weather report similar to that. But it's, it's more similar for Oklahoma. It's a lot like tornadoes in that we could tell you places that are more likely. And if we have um, something going on, we can tell you, you might want to watch out. But typically, our window isn't in the next few hours of storms coming. It's this part of the fault might go within the next 30 years, which geologically is pretty quick. But it's a part that looks potentially more active over the next few years. Um, and those percentages, we get as high as saying something like 70 to 90% chance in the next 20, 30 years, this segment might go. But that's about as accurate as we can get. Um, we can't do the next week at five. Um, we're gonna expect a, a 7.0 at this location. Well, while my observations are far from scientific, it, it seems that I've seen more earthquakes here in Oklahoma, or at least reports of earthquakes here in Oklahoma in the recent months than I can remember. And, and most of that is, is reporting. Um, we're reporting more earthquakes. In terms of a location like Oklahoma, we typically um, don't have the really big earthquakes that like happened in Haiti or Chile because we're not in a plate boundary. And so we're not at a place where rocks are, are adjacent to each other that might be moving. And typically your pape boundaries, they might be moving back and forth uh, like they are in San Francisco where one side is sliding past the other. You could have places where it's slamming together like in Chile where one rock is going underneath another. Or you can have it pulling apart, which is similar to Iceland, which is erupting right now. And you're pulling apart the rocks and you have volcanism occurring and earthquakes. So when you're doing those movements, if you're right there at the boundary, you get the most shaking, you get the largest earthquakes. We're not on one of those boundaries. So we do have some faults that are moving but we tend to get, uh, our biggest tend to be maybe a four or five would be sort of the biggest thing we tend to get. Uh, but 
in Oklahoma, we have another mechanism that is of concern when you um, produce fluids from the subsurface. If you inject fluids, we've had cases uh, in Oklahoma and other locations where if you over inject fluids, you can generate some small earthquakes. And that's something called fracking in the oil and gas industry, correct? You can be, you can be injecting to dispose of water or you can be injecting to frack um, materials in order to um, produce greater amounts of oil or gas. Um, but typically what you try to do is make, make predictions and have understanding of, okay, this scenario where we don't want to get pressures too high in order to cause that sort of effect and we try to protect against it. But but every once in a while you'll get a small quake from something like that. And while we're experiencing these small quakes, we're not immune here in the middle of the United States from earthquakes. What, the big one in 1800? Now, mid-continent, we had a huge one in the early 1800s on along the New Madrid Fault, and it did things um, like cause huge uh, mud mounds along the Mississippi River. If you drive along there, you can see some hills that were generated as mud squirted up out of the ground. Um, there was reports in the Mississippi River flowing backwards, and if it happened today, uh, huge amounts of Memphis would be destroyed. But the nice part is we're uh, far enough onto bedrock that we would likely be a place that dealt with um, refugees from those areas and people that were displaced, but we likely would have our hospitals intact and could, could take care of those people if that happened. The other large hazard if that happened today would be that um, all the communication pipelines for gas, oil, um, any uh, water pipelines going across, any communication cables for the internet um, would likely be snapped or damaged. And so there would be a huge change to the U.S. if a similar quake happened today. And so people have uh, done a lot of planning in the mid-continent to try to deal with that. But there was a case back in the early 90s where somebody who had decent credentials um, but no evidence uh, made a prediction of an earthquake on a particular day at a particular time along the New Madrid, and it caused a huge panic. A lot of people bought earthquake insurance and um, took off a lot of schools closed, and it, was, it had nothing to do with science, but it was somebody who had enough credentials that people reported on it and panicked the mid-continent U.S., at least places around uh, the New Madrid Fault, Missouri, and Memphis area. And so you have to be very careful when you make a prediction like that um, you have a lot of effects, and there was financially a huge amount of effects for the area with no scientific basis for making a prediction like that. All right, as always. Appreciate you coming by. Thank you, Todd. Thanks. Todd Hallahan with OSU School of Geology.